How's it going, folks? Huge revelation today. I have found a way to fully automate the recording process in Counter-Strike Frag movies. No more sitting around and pressing a button or putting in a command every time you want to record a clip. You can actually set the recording process to happen automatically, and then you can walk away and go do whatever you want. I'm going to show you how. Stick with me. Let's get started. Okay, so let's first create a stream, okay? All right, so Merv Streams add base effects and we'll call it base, okay? Now, what we wanna do is we want to tell Half-Life Events Effects when to start recording this stream onto your computer at a certain tick in the demo, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in Merv CMD Okay, so what came up is a whole list of commands that are available to us. This first one is you can add this command at the tick that we're currently at, okay? Or you can add it at a specific tick, okay? So say you went through the entire demo and you wrote down on your paper or on a notepad all of these frag sequences and the ticks that they happened at. Well, we can go through and we can just start creating different commands to execute at those specific tick times, okay? There's also a lot of ways to edit a command once you've made it, okay? You can clear commands once you've made them, and then you can also print to see what commands you've created, okay? So let's just, we'll just do the very basics here, okay? Because um, this is, you know, a, a brand new thing, and I don't want to overwhelm you all at once. Okay, so I typed in Murkan path print because I wanted to see what current tick we're at right now. So we're at 13539, okay? So let's tell Half-Life Advanced Effects to start recording our base effects stream at uh, 14,000, okay? The tick 14,000, okay? So very simple, Merv CMD add at tick, because if we look up here, the command Merv CMD add at tick will add a command at the given tick that we specified, okay? And we're gonna type in 14,000, okay? Now, what's really cool about this is that you can add multiple commands all the way to infinity. You don't have to stop at one command, which is really nice, okay? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, we're just going to stick to one command for now, okay? And that's just going to be Merv streams record start, okay? All right, so we're just going to stick to one command for now, okay? All right, now hit enter. Okay, now... We want to record for a thousand ticks, okay? So we're gonna record from 14,000 to all the way to 15,000, okay? And then at 15,000, the tick 15,000, we want to end the recording, okay? Okay, cool. That's honestly about it. Let's type in Merv command print. And as you can see, I was already playing around with it up here, but here are new ones. Okay, at 14,000, it's going to start the recording, and at 15,000, it's going to end the recording. Okay, all right, so let's play the demo and let's see if it worked. Okay, we just played the demo, and as you can see, Auto Director sort of got a little crazy there, but if you noticed, it looked like it started to record judging by the way that the colors changed and it got a little laggy when we were playing, when we were watching the demo, okay? Let me hit console, see if it worked. Okay, so as you can see, it looks like it executed. Command system is enabled, Merv CMD enabled is one. Starting recording, done. Recording to C Merv take 0000, zero, zero, zero. finishing recording, done. It looks like it worked. All right, let's go check. Okay, so it looks like I have a folder here. Let's double click it. All right, we have audio. Now let's go to base. And it looks like we have TGAs that were created. Okay, cool. I think it worked. Here's the cool part. We can add multiple commands here to execute a variety of things all at once. Say we wanted to set our host frame rate, right? Or we wanted to edit the stream settings so you can record to AVI instead of TGAs. Well, we can, it's super easy. It's basically just layering them and separating each command with a semicolon, okay? And you can do as many commands as you want and it'll work perfectly, okay? All right, let's do merv cam path print to get 
what tick we're at. Okay, so we're currently at 14,551, okay? So let's execute the first command at 1,500, okay? Merv CMD add at tick 15,000. And then what we want to do is we want to hit quotation marks, and let's create another stream here, okay? Just so you can get everything from the start. Merge streams, add base effects, and we'll call it base one, okay? And then what you do is you actually hit semicolon, okay? So with the quotations and the semicolon, we can keep adding commands here, okay? So let's add another one. All right, we're gonna put in host time scale zero. So host time scale zero basically allows you to, it doesn't affect the, the speed of the demo being played. So for example, if I put host time scale to 0.1, it's gonna slow the uh, the speed of the clip down a lot. Or if I put it at 10, it's gonna speed it up a lot. Host time scale zero basically allows you to change the frame rate, but doesn't affect the speed of the, uh, the demo being played, okay? So then we want to set the frame rate and we'll make it, uh, I don't know, we'll make it 300 or something, okay? And then we have to put in Merv SND time scale one. And this will basically, because we are changing host time scale and fr the frame rate, Merv SND time scale one will basically force the sound to play normally. So it doesn't get slowed down or deep or pitched down. So that's very helpful as well, okay? And then what we wanna do is type in Merv streams record start okay and that's it okay so let's let's try all those commands I, I i have a good feeling about that okay so merge streams add base effects base one and then host time scale host frame rate merv snd time scale and merge streams record start and those are all separated by semicolon and they're all enclosed by quotations okay let's hit enter cool all right now Let's let's have that record for a thousand ticks, okay? So say your frag sequence starts at fifteen thousand, okay, and your last frag ends at like fifteen thousand nine hundred, right? But you want to add on an extra hundred ticks, okay? So let's end it at sixteen thousand, okay? Well, what we do is we type in Merv CMD add at tick sixteen thousand. And then we basically go through and we stop the recording. But then we also want to revert some of these commands that we put in. What we're gonna do is we're going to first put in Merv streams record end, okay, semicolon. And then we wanna change the host time scale back to one. And then what we wanna do is we wanna do Merv SND time scale and we want to change that back to default okay because we don't really need that on if our host time scale is at one and then we want to change our host frame rate back to zero and what host frame rate back to zero means is that it's just going to your basically your computer dictates the um the the frame rate okay so we're not forcing a frame rate we're letting our computer just play the demo normally at whatever frame rate you know, our, our CPU and our graphics card can handle, okay? And then as the last one, let's um, let's put demo pause in, okay? And we're going to put that in just to uh, basically give us a visual cue that all of these commands worked properly, okay? So you don't have to put that in. Um, I'm just gonna do it because I wanna show you that this all worked according to plan, okay? So last thing, and close it with the quotations, hit enter, cool. All right, Merv, CMD, print and as you can see it looks like these all went in okay now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to type in net graph three okay and what i want you to do is we're going to watch this fps counter and we're going to make sure that it changes to 300 right so when it hits 15,000, this should change to 300 and we know that it's recording properly okay and as soon as it hits 16,000, it should stop change the host frame rate back to zero, which means we should go back to having 90 FPS. That is actually a really terrible FPS to have. My computer is very old. <laughs> All right, okay, let's hit play. Let's see if it works. As you can see, it looks like it's recording. The F FPS just jumped up to 300, uh, it's, it's at 299. Um, but that's probably just a, um, an error there. Okay. 
So at 16,000, we should see the FPS jump back down to zero and we should see the demo pause, okay? Okay, all right, I stopped fast forwarding in Premiere. All right, we're at 15,960. Let's see if it stops at 16,000. Boom. It stopped recording at 16,000. We dropped down to our normal 100 FPS. It looks like it worked. All right, let's go check. See if we have TGAs in our folder. Okay, cool. All right, so here's the folder that my Merv recordings get sent to. Okay, let's click on it. Looks like we have an audio file and it looks like we have a base one. If you remember, that was our base stream that we created. Let's click on it. And it looks like we have a folder of TGA files. Okay about 2300 of them so i'm going to go out and limb and say it recorded at its proper frame rate and everything worked properly okay cool so as you can see i gave you a proof of concept we can put in a string of commands to execute at a certain time and then just let the demo play and then it will record all by itself you don't have to sit in front of your computer and hit the button every time you want to record a frag sequence and what we can even do is if you remember me talking about how host time scale works what you can do is after you end the recording you can set host time scale to 10. the demo can play fast forward and only stop and record in normal speed only at your frags so there's a way to execute this frag recording sequence in an incredibly fast manner there's no limit to what you can achieve with the Merv CMD command. And you know what? Now that I know how to do this, I'm going to start doing it myself. Especially if I have a demo that has six or seven frag sequences in it. You know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the demo. I'm going to write down all the times that the frags happen. And then I'm going to input this Merv CMD command in. And uh, I'm going to walk away and grab a snack. Or grab a drink. You know? You can do so many things with this, and I can't wait to see what you can accomplish now that you know how to use the MERV CND command to fully automate the frag recording process.